Hello, for lover, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Lover Lover, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes, featuring veterans, the people and cultures of the Pacific, and small businesses. I'm your host, Michael Tan, and joining me today is my co-host, Spencer. But before we get started, a quick reminder to our listeners to follow, subscribe, and leave a review if you enjoy the show. Now, let's jump straight into it. Today, we will be talking with Renee Curtis and Kyle Cross. They are Medicare sales agents. Talo for Renee and Kyle. Hello. Hello. We'll, we'll start off with Renee. Can you briefly introduce yourself, Renee? Yeah. Um, I am. My name's Renee, and I am from originally from California. Um, so I moved out here to Utah not too long ago, and I started out in the cosmetic industry. So that's my background, and then. I decided to make a big change in my life. I wanted to be able to give back more to the community. And so then I started jumping into the health insurance side, which it changing careers at my young age <laughs> was, it's been interesting to, to change into completely different language. Um, but the one thing that I've always had a passion for is to really, really be of service, be of help. And my mom went through breast cancer treatments and it was really difficult for her to heal and feel comfortable with the financial, without the financial stress and understanding how her insurance worked. And so I said, well, shoot, if we can't beat him, we might as well join him, mom. <laughs> so I just became an agent and, and it's been so phenomenal to be able to help back and give to the community. So, yeah, that's why I reached out. And I, I um, set up Kyle to do the Pacific um, Islander event here coming up this weekend. So we're trying to get out there. Thank you for sharing. How about you, Kyle? Yeah, thank you. Um, so my name is uh, Kyle Cross. Uh, I'm also... Uh, licensed a sales agent uh, like Renee. Um, we're uh, colleagues. Um, and I uh, grew up in Utah for the most part, moved here when I was four from back east. So Utah has definitely uh, been my home. Uh, you know, and, you know, I love Utah, every, everything about it. You know, I love the, the mountains. I love the, the culture. I love the diversity uh, that's been uh, kind of changing a lot in the last, you know, decade or so. Um, and you really can't beat it. So, um, you know, I, I love, a uh, big passion of mine is uh, sports. My uh, son plays football, so that's kind of a, you know, coming up and that's kind of a, you know, a family pastime, I guess, you know, as things uh, ramp up. Uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, an all or nothing kind of scenario. So something that I'm passionate about is, you know, just all sports in general, you, you know, the community and, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, on uh, Renee's uh, note, you know, I used to work in financial services, um, kind of in operational type roles, supporting, uh, you know, big banks globally. And I transitioned to um, sales um, to become uh, an agent for a kind of a very similar reason, you know, because, you know, it's a way to promote um, kind of what we can do to improve people's lives, really. One of the things that I love about my role is the ability to um, not necessarily, you know, have to be behind a computer all day, although that's part of it. I, you know, I'm used to that and enjoy it. But being out in the community and, uh, you know, our roles really give us the opportunity to, you know, meet with all kinds of uh, community members, you know, and serve them in, you know, really any way we can to kind of get, uh, you know, get uh, known and, and, you know, support people, you know, as people age, you know, health becomes, you know, a, a big priority costs, you know, are really at the forefront of many people's minds. And so we're kind of here to, you know, help people overcome that, you know, help uh, explain a complicated system. Um, there's, you know, nothing uh, that I'd rather be doing. So. Thank you. So That's... I'm going to start off with a, with a warm up question to kind of uh, get things going um, for you two, Renee and Kyle. Um, what about, what aspects about Utah do you guys enjoy and what made you guys want to live here? Go ahead, Kyle. That's you. Okay. First. <laughs> um, uh, for me, the you know the the family oriented culture is probably number one for me. Um, um, the community based um, environment. You know, I, I've heard uh, in other states is just you know 
very different. Utah really stands apart in that way. And because of that, we're seeing, you know, massive population growth. You guys probably see that too, right? It's, you know, it's gone crazy the last, you know, 10 years. Um, But, you know, outside of that, you know, we have, you know, probably one of the most, if not the most underrated geographical location, you know, in the country between, you know, the nice weather, the mountains, the outdoors definitely keep me here. And, you know, all those other things, you know, aside, you know, there's, Utah is a kind of a booming uh, commerce industry as well and on all levels. So that's definitely what, what keeps me here and, you know, why I love Utah. And I, um, when I, I first moved here, it was, uh, <laughs> I won't say necessarily by choice, but I remember first moving here and I remember looking around and we moved to Lehigh. It was there like out in Eagle Mountain and there wasn't anything out there. And I remember being at the store and I was looking around and I can't remember what restaurant we're sitting in. And I was like, Oh my gosh, me and my kids, we're the only, we're the only brown ones in this restaurant. Where, where did we land? What's going on in here? It was amazing. And so as the culture, as the state has grown, the culture is just blown up here. And so originally we first moved here because it was inexpensive for families from California. It it was, it's so inexpensive to have a family, a healthy family, and to be able to do all these activities here. There was a dollar theater, I think up in, up at, uh, where's by, um, what's (laughs) by the Nordstrom rack up in, is it Cottonwood Heights at Cottonwood? That little area, um, Sandy. It was just so affordable to live here. And then the culture, then it started growing more as a culture. And I have absolutely fallen in love with that aspect. It's in the mountains, I'm going to say, the kind of grown on me now. They really have grown on me. First, they were just like a east and west type situation because I couldn't find my way around. (laughs) Kind of was that first. And then I fell in love with the mountains and hiking and all that aspect. So I, I love it. I love it here to Utah. And as a matter of fact, now... I'm like, don't tell anybody about how cool Utah is because it's going to get busier. Shh, don't tell. <laughs> Keep it on the down low. We don't want it to get too busy. I don't want anybody else following. So I tease my my family back home. I'm like, oh, it's awful. Oh, you, no, you don't want to come here. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's just a beautiful state and it's so grown on me. So that's me. Are you a veteran, military member, law enforcement officer, hospital worker, or educator dreaming of owning your own home? Frontline Heroes is here to make that dream a reality. Their program is designed by a group of realtors, lenders, and escrow specialists who want to give back to those who served our communities. Here's how it works. Their realtors pledge to contribute 25% of their commission, while lenders chip in half a percentage towards closing costs and other fees associated with buying a house. It's their way of honoring your service and making home ownership more attainable. Contact Dan Taylor at 801-512-4200 to learn more and take the first step towards owning your own home. Frontline heroes, turning dreams into keys. Now, you definitely have seen the growth of the state, I'm sure, since you've been here. Because, I mean, it's been fast. Like, the, you know, and all things up front. I'm not in Utah anymore. I'm actually in Las Vegas. But it's going through a, a similar, like, spurt of growth. You know, it's like my dad was, uh, he always teases me when I go visit. He's like, oh, why don't you move to Utah? Like, oh, you like that big city life. I'm like, Las Vegas isn't a very big city. And I guess growing, but it's like. You know, Utah to me has more of a big city now, uh, more of a big city feel. I told them like, like if I go up to Provo or Salt Lake uh, and I drive any direction for a half hour, I'm still in civilization. I end up in West Valley or Ogden or, you know, if I'm going south, I'm back in Provo or, or Orem, et cetera. And I was like, if I go to the middle of Las Vegas and I drive any direction for a half hour, 40 minutes, I'm out in the desert. Like that's like, but the thing is, is like Vegas is rapidly growing. I think it's almost doubled in size in the last decade or two. It's it's a secrets out. Um, it's going For through sure. similar gro- growth, and like even just so, my brother lives in Eagle Mountain. Him and his family, and it's crazy because every time I go visit him, I can't believe how bustling that area is now. Because when they first showed up, it was 
a few suburban homes and farmland. That was it. Like now you got stores, you've got convenience stores, you got everything out there. It's like it's crazy. Yeah. I think there was one stop sign. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think literally there was. <laughs> there was one there. stop sign, and I remember I was looking out the window. I'm all, what? Is that a cat? Oh, that's a red, that's a fox. What? <laughs> and I've seen brown eagles out there. It's a beautiful place. It's so beautiful, but it's changed. Yeah, it's changed so much in the past six months or so, even just that short amount of time. So it's pretty cool what you guys are doing, though, uh, as far as like your business and stuff. Uh, I like how you said that you were you transitioned over to this from basically out of a desire because you wanted to help people. You're very successful in other venues and and whatnot, and you're like, you know, I don't want to do something more. That's pretty commendable. But and I really appreciate stuff like that because I'm someone who definitely needs some help with that. You know approaching 40 in the upcoming future and i've been blessed to have a pretty good run with my health but the the double-edged sword of that is now that i'm getting older it's like look we're all going to need help navigating our health and programs that assist in financing that and that's completely foreign to me because i've ignored going to doctors and stuff and like i said i'm like extremely fortunate that i've had good health most of my life and so this idea of navigating through this stuff is like it's just such a mystery. And I think I may have told the story here before, but last year I really, really lucked out because I'm in the Army Reserves. I signed up for uh, the TRICARE Reserve Select, I think it's called, uh, program because I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's one of the perks of being a reservist that I can tap into. Let me tap into it now while I'm still a reservist. And uh like literally the very next month after I was completely enrolled, uh, I do jujitsu. I ended up getting accidentally kneed in the face and it kind of made my nose crooked and whatnot, but I was free. I was freaking out. Cause like, Oh, this happened to me, but it was a, I lucked out because I actually was enrolled in a, some kind of insurance. I didn't have health insurance before that, you know? And so like, uh, I just lucked out that I signed in and uh, within a month of hurting myself. So I had that covered. And so my point is, is that that was sheer luck. And especially as I transition out of the army, I am not going to have that TRICARE reserve select program. I'm going to need help from somebody in the know to basically walk me through this. Cause I, you know, med medical stuff and financial stuff for medical is just completely foreign to me. Yeah. It was like having to get a, a, a PhD. It, it was so intense for me to switch over to this career. So I am, this is your, like the exact type of person who I can help educate now. And even under, so Medicare, our specialty is for 65 and older, but it's so important for our generation, our age group to be prepared for that because it comes just like that. And you don't want to be caught um, without. And my biggest thing also was that a lot of our, and I'm, my voice gets loud when I get passionate. Sorry. <laughs> my screaming. <laughs> um, our senior citizens and our vets are being t like, um, what's the word I want to look for? Not scammed, but they're a point of and a, a way to take advantage of. And so that was another huge reason. I was like, I, I got to get out there. We got to get out there and we have to help our, our vets and our, and our seniors and vets have a special, a special place in my heart. I've got lots of close friends that are called family and their, their process after leaving the military, I, Words cannot even like describe that, that transition, that transition alone is something that I just feel all that needs to be talked about. It's kind of hushed and not talked about. So that was another reason why I was like, I got to be the voice. I got to help. Yeah. That's, that's one of the biggest problems is not being in the know, not knowing what options are available. So can you two provide an overview of the private insurance, uh, private health insurance options that are available to veterans or to the public? Yeah. So 
once you are able to receive Medicare at 65, you automatically get A and B. So our private insurances have stepped in and are able to, it's called Medicare Advantage, and we are like an umbrella for A and B with some extra perks. And so um, the veteran, our vets um, have a huge, uh, we have got a lot of resources for them and we have a huge plan difference for them. And I will let Kyle, Kyle's my man, Kyle, is the vet side is his specialty. Yeah, thanks, Renee. Um, so, you know, happy to kind of uh, give some more detail on that. So, you know, we do specialize, uh, like Renee mentioned, in the uh, Medicare Advantage space. Um, so you have, like Renee mentioned, Parts A and B, which is traditional Medicare. You can become eligible for Medicare one of two ways. Um, you can um, age into it, is what we call, uh, what, what it's called, uh, which is it when you turn 65, um, you're automatically eligible for Medicare. Medicare is um, through the federal government. Just to be clear for compliance as well, we do not work for the federal government. Uh, we just need to state that. Um, but um, we're very familiar with kind of the system, how it works. Um, the other way you can uh, become eligible for Medicare is if um, an individual has been on disability for 24 months or longer. So not necessarily 65, but if they've been on disability for 24 months or longer, they are automatically eligible for Medicare as well. So there are two ways to become eligible. And beyond that, there's the uh, Medicare Advantage plans. Those are the uh, private insurance carriers that offer support. Um, and they essentially come in, uh, they work with the Medicare system and replace those parts A and B and adds additional benefits to it. So if someone were to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, they would essentially receive a private insurance card. And then in addition to providing the parts A and B Medicare benefits, there's enhanced benefits on those plans as well, which are things like dental, vision, hearing. Those are things that uh, traditional Medicare does not cover. Um, and then a lot of plans offer some additional perks, you know, like um, fitness options where plans will include uh, fitness in, embedded into the plan where they can have a free gym membership at certain places, fitness classes. Um, there's also programs where people can re earn reward points on our plans, on the uh, private insurance plans. And as they accumulate those reward points for uh, well-being visits, uh, social activities, fitness tracking, all kinds of things. Um, they can redeem those for, for rewards like um, some plans offer like gift cards uh, as a reward for tracking those activities. And there's also uh, kind of like uh, Renee had mentioned, we have a big focus on uh, veterans. So um, the private insurance space uh, really kind of caters to veterans in a lot of ways, especially when it comes to Medicare. There are certain plans that offer what's called um, Part B givebacks. So there is a premium for Part B once a, a Medicare enrollee becomes eligible and they enroll in Medicare. And that's actually for 2024, it's $174.80 uh, a month for a Medicare Part B premium. Could go up and, you know, it's estimated to go up uh, about $10 for 2025. It's not um, officially announced yet. But the veteran plans offer uh, what's called a, some of the veteran plans offer what's called a Part B give back. So anywhere from, you know, it can range depending on the carrier and the plan, anywhere from maybe 50 to $100, they get back and that Part B premium gets reduced. So it's that kind of a, a, a special uh, focus on veterans to, you know, for cost efficiency and get their medical costs, that premium down and uh, provide the additional services like the dental vision hearing. And a lot of veterans, you know, will utilize, um, I know you had brought this up, Spencer, you, you know, TRICARE. Um, veterans will utilize TRICARE, also, uh, you know, VA benefits. Uh, many of them continue to utilize those benefits and still add a Medicare Advantage plan for the Part B give back, number one, but also to have dental vision and hearing, um, kind of that private insurance offering there. And then a lot of them will continue to receive, you know, their VA care, but they kind of have the private insurance plan for a civilian uh, primary care provider or doctor in their back pocket and utilize the plan, you know, as needed. 
and kind of it's really uh, in a lot of ways uh, a win win. That's my favorite part about the plan, though. That is my absolute favorite part is that you don't have to go to the VA. It gives you options. It opens up the door to a different party. <laughs> so I, I feel like in that sense alone, it enables our vets to get a second opinion. You're not just, you don't have to feel that you don't have options or feel that you just have to be exclusive when you step outside that box and join one of those plans. And so I feel like that's that alone is worth its weight in gold. And then Kyle and I are one of six, six agents here in the state. So we are a actual, how do we say, go-to person. We're our actual um, live agents that can help with customer service wise. So, you know, it's just, I have had to do this so many times. I have to call you back on your insurance card and then you got to wait. They got press one for English and then they didn't hear you. And then you got to redo your birth date, whatever. It's, it's the worst. So that's kind of cool. I feel like that's one of my perks about my job. I absolutely love is that you can just call Kyle or I right away and we can get your, um, most of those answers pretty quick. At American United, we help when others won't. If you're in Utah and need a second chance at banking, they've got your back. They offer everything from business to personal banking to online services, credit, coaching, and financial mentoring. And they do it all with lower fees, higher dividends, and exclusive member rewards. American United takes pride in helping their members succeed. Whether you need an auto loan, a credit card, or a retirement account, they have the perfect fit for your lifestyle. Plus, They show their appreciation for our veterans with special VA programs for those who have served in the U.S. military. And here's something really special. American United is the proud title sponsor of the annual Pacific Island Veterans Day Dinner Gala, demonstrating their commitment to our community and our heroes. So whether you're buying your first house or planning your retirement, let American United Federal Credit Union be there for you. They're all about celebrating life's achievements, big and small. Remember, we help when others won't. Visit amucu.org to learn more and become a member today. So with us, that's one of the reasons that we kind of both got into this role is, you know, we are, you know, specifically field agents. So, you know, when something comes up, you know, we have the capability and the uh, infrastructure to come visit somebody, kind of figure out any issues with their plan really kind of work with them one-on-one in person. And I think that uh, definitely goes a long way being in front of somebody and kind of working through that in person. Um, So um, thanks for bringing that up, Renee. Yeah, we get to go. If you are invited to the home and sign agents up, like I always say, I won't be late for dinner. I'll tell you that. (laughs) I mean, that kind of fits your, like the entire, basically how we started, like you guys, uh, and your your love for Utah and what makes Utah unique. It's like uh, everything you just described is very fitting with that. It's like, oh, you need that in person touch. Let's let's meet up. You know, it's very doable, especially in the northern Utah area. No, that's that's pretty cool. It's like that, and that personal touch really is a uh, like that's a huge thing. You know, especially for veterans because you know. Every every guy that I know in the army has a love hate relationship with the army, and one of the hate parts comes from the fact that you know from day one, someone may or may not be actually taking care of you. Like I like literally from the MEP center when I enlisted, I was already getting my stuff messed up. I remembered yeah. later in years down the road when I found myself in Afghanistan for the first time, uh, they you know they were trying to pursue giving me a promotion out there. They wanted to going from specialist to corporal well they needed to dig up my uh or not corporal they, i think they were trying to push me to sergeant at that point but the, the problem was there was a snag in it because they looked at my digital records and there was nothing in there there's nothing to even show that i'd been to basic training that i got in my mos training all the stuff that i needed to build, compile to build a promotion packet was just non-existent like i was a ghost in the digital system and it's been a it's, you know, that's just one example, but it's an ongoing theme with me and many other soldiers where it's like, 
you know, the army only takes care of you as much as you take care of yourself. I have to go out of my way to get my, you know, to pull teeth and pull hair and just like bend somebody's ear. Please, can you upload this for me to get my official records straight? But if I'm not fighting tooth and nail the whole time, it's just never going to happen. And so like, and a lot of times you get funneled into these programs, these systems where you don't get that personal touch. Or if you do talk to a person, it's a soldier just trying to make their nine to five and just be done for the day. They may or may not get back to you. (laughs) Like That's it, you know? Um, So what you're offering there is a huge thing. I don't know. I don't know if... uh, You could help me out right here, but just for example, like I hurt, I injured myself in uh, training literally more than a year ago. And because I hurt myself on army time, I was supposed to get their full TRICARE. I went to a clinic, got my x-rays, et cetera. And to this day, I am still getting uh, bills sent to me from, from care now because TRICARE for whatever reason, I've jumped through a million hoops with the representative that is liaison between me and TRICARE on the army side. And they're like, yeah, TRICARE should pay for it. TRICARE should pay for it. They won't pay for it. And so like, for whatever reason, there's a gap, even though I have an advocate on the army side, that's showing me, I see their entire uh, conversation between TRICARE this medical center and the army and for some, and they're like, yeah, everything's resolved. And then I get another bill in the mail and it's like, can you guys just pay this please? <laughs> like, just I mean, it's not any money it. out of my pocket, but it's, this is an example of what I mean, the clutter in dealing with how the military does things. And I'm still in what's going to, what's this going to be like when I get out, you know, and that's why I'm really going to depend on folks like you for what you're providing. Yeah, 100%. And again, this is just one small story of what, is actually going on. And the part that, that really holds to my heart is when those type of situations come, how those that are still yeah, enlisted, how are you supposed to do their job effectively knowing these medical concerns are, are piling up in the background? How, how do you keep your head clear or just even after you, after you leave the service? It's hard to keep a family afloat when all those things are weighing on you. And I, I came from a scrappy type of environment, do I want to say, and I had to really work hard my way up. I've had to use different resources to build myself back up. And so I'm, I'm here for it. That's, that's my game. That's what I'm here to do is to be able to fight and take those papers, take those papers and see what we can do. And Kyle's super, super, like Kyle's really resourceful too at, at finding, finding ways to help with our company, with our. <laughs> oh, yeah. While we're on the topic of problems, um, what, what are some common challenges that veterans face when navigating their health insurance options, especially um, with Medicare? So far, the challenges that, that I've come across is that how do we say this without I'm just I'll just say it so that they see a vet at, they see a doctor at the VA this doesn't sound right this doesn't feel right I, I don't feel like I'm getting this kind of that's the right kind of care I don't feel that this was that was a good option in fact may have not been the best the best option in that and that um, veteran knowing that in their heart and having to just feel helpless that they that they don't have any options to w- anybody else to go to because then the finances come into play. And so oh and the and the other one too, that one and then the oh this this just this this gets my heart so bad is that a lot of them a lot of vets aren't reaching out for help because of this whole gamut of um, not being able to get the service, feeling that they're not going to be able to get the service. So mental health reasons and mental health situations are just, are, are tanking because they don't feel that they can actually reach out and get the help that they need and afford it. And who's someone who actually really cares. And so I feel like the programs that we have, or especially just like Kyle and us being an actual person face on, we're here to conquer that. That's what's part of our, our goal. And Kyle probably has a couple of other 
I mean, there's like there's a, a long list of things. I'm sure Kyle has got his own. Yeah, and I would uh, you know echo that a little bit. You know, I'd say you know the some of the biggest challenges that you know that I've seen with uh, you know veterans is you know understanding kind of the confusion in the space um, because you know many veterans have you know utilize it whether it's Tricare or VA and just understanding that to kind of there's you know more to it than that and they have more more access than they realize. So uh, you know I know the VA you know I've heard stories of you know long waits um, and just kind of, you know, very, uh, you know, kind of a, kind of a narrow uh, amount of care, you know, because it's just, you know, it's one facility, right. And they can only handle so many people. Um, so it's kind of, you know, making it known to veterans that, you know, they do have something else that, you know, they can utilize, you know, along with Medicare, which is, you know, to go to a civilian doctor and get, you know, potentially a, a more specialized treatment. I think that's a big thing for veterans and uh, you know, allowing them to take advantage of, you know, some of the benefits that might be available to them, saving them money with a Part B give back, you know, finances kind of are always a focus, you know, it, with any group, but, you know, especially veterans, it, you know, kind of a, utilizing that financial ben- benefit, but also, you know, utilizing maybe a private insurance carrier for psychiatric care, you know, to kind of expand through, expand outside of the, the VA. So, uh, you know, that would definitely be kind of the biggest um, challenge or obstacle that I've seen with veterans, just, you know, really just, you know, making them aware of what else is available to them um, for treatment or, uh, you know, like Renee said, second opinions, that can be a big deal. And just, you know, having a, a option to go to a provider that's, you know, a few miles from their house or, you know, rather than having to go to just the VA, which could be, you know, half hour away, um, especially if there's a, an emergency. I'm just yeah. curious uh, because for most of my life, like you, it's a common thing that you've heard that the VA is trash, like that. It's like, it's so such a pain to get going. And, but the thing is, is in recent years, People I talk to have actually made uh, affirmations that it's actually gotten a lot better and that actually like they're finding it a bit more easy and streamlined to get access to the benefits they need, whether it be their disability or uh, their disability ratings or just being set up to proceed to getting the help that they need. Can either of you attest to that? That like, Have you seen a change in the VA in recent years that is this true? Is it getting easier to work with? Is it? A better program, would you say? Um, just through some actual uh, recent um, member uh, interactions that I've had, I I will uh, second that. I think you're you've made a really good point, and I, and um, there are uh, you know definitely programs available to veterans. You know they definitely you know take care of people. You know especially when you know if there's like a big procedure that's needed um, or uh, you know a disability involved. You know, they'll house them, right? And they'll have them in a very nice housing facility right next to the you know, VA medical center. And, uh, you know, there's a member that I was working with that actually um, utilized pretty much everything uh, healthcare related with his VA benefits. And he actually had a uh, an alert where if he had an emergency and he was taken to, you know, by, he was taken to a, a hospital that he would actually have an alert sent to the VA and they would immediately come get him. So um, you kind of, there's, there's definitely, uh, you know, things that I've seen personally that uh, kind of showcase, you know, what you're saying, Spencer. Um, and he, and this uh, individual actually still utilized a, uh, you know, a private insurance plan in addition to his VA, um, you know, to get uh, the, you know, the financial benefit of the Part B give back, um, but also just kind of have, still have those things in his back pocket for uh, civilian care. But uh, I've definitely run into people that are really all in on VA because it's also, in many cases, it covers all the prescriptions. So that can be a huge cost in, you know, as you age as well. So I don't know if you had any uh, takes on that as too, Renee. Um, the prescription part. 100 percent the vas never in a couple experiences that i've had they haven't let them down through the the prescriptions here in utah our va our va is really good i haven't heard too many people complain about the lack 
of, um, well, I want to say lack, kind of lack of service up there. And there's a couple others, like little ways of them sprouting out too. So that's kind of been helpful as well. That's been nice. So they had to, right? They, they had to start stepping up their game. So it's people like me and Kyle, like, do it. You have to open it up. <laughs> help these guys, help the men and women. Maybe they need a few more locations so Michael doesn't have to go all the way to Idaho. <laughs> yeah, I did go all the way to Idaho for an appointment, but they definitely have improved in Salt Lake City, their VA hospital. Yeah, they improved access and their coverage and a lot of things. So what's, what steps can veterans take to better understand and access their health insurance benefits, in this case, Medicare, for you guys? You can access, I'm just, I just set up a brand new Facebook page. Yeah, so excited. <laughs> it's Renee, um, Renee Curtis Insurance Agent, I believe it's just my Facebook. And I know Kyle has his. I have a book now, so you can always call, book, appointment, meet up for coffee, meet on the pickleball, pickleball, right, Kyle? <laughs> he has his own um, Facebook page as well. Yeah, I'm also heavily involved in the uh, pickleball community locally here as well. Um, but I think uh, for anyone that's looking for uh, more information, um, you know, there's a lot of information out there, right? Um, it's kind of how do we sort through this? Um, I think the best way to do it is to work with an agent. You know, We'll walk you through every step of the process, meet with you in person. We have all of the materials to kind of show you line by line, you know, what's being offered, you know, and, and how you can save money and get the care that you need. They can uh, find me on Facebook as well at just facebook.com forward slash um, agent uh, Kyle Cross, similar to uh, Renee there. We're here for it. If there's a, if there's any organizations out there that, that need help, that need volunteers, that's Kyle and Kyle and I are, are, are here. We're, we're here to open our, open ourselves up to more involvement. So we're trying to, to not only um, give, but in the, the health insurance way, but if there's other aspects that that's need the other um, nonprofit organizations, that's what we're here for here to fill out my books with that. Yeah, absolutely. Reach out. If, uh, if you guys or anybody listening um, has any, uh, Scenarios, that, you know, in, in Utah where you need just a volunteer to help with you know, any of the vent veteran events, happy to, you know, lend a hand. Um, that's part of the amazing things about our role is we are encouraged to, uh, you know, support the community in any way we can. So it's not just about the, the insurance, uh, you know, it's about uh, being involved. So, you know, happy to help. Now, Renee and Kyle, do you have, do you guys have any final thoughts or advice to, to any to to the veterans who are feeling overwhelmed by their uh, Medicare or health insurance options, or basically need help with their Medicare. I'm here for it. We're here. This is us. We are. We're here to help take any load off. Like I said, there we have access to so many resources, so many resources. So we're just a phone call away. And Kyle and I both work on that ethics that anytime, any time of the day, night, just need to reach out to call, need someone to talk to. That's how we can help give back. That's how we like to work. Right, Kyle? Call Kyle first. <laughs> call Kyle first. Uh, After just, a single digit, that's Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, uh, Michael, you know, somebody that's feeling overwhelmed, you know, kind of by all the options or just, um, the next steps is, yeah, reach out, um, reach out, find an agent and, uh, you know, and, and have them, you know, walk you through that process step by step. Um, because, you know, really it, it, uh, seems overwhelming, but once it's kind of, uh, put out there and shown and, um, you know, and shown the, the steps, the strategies and everything that is available it kind of takes that, you know, takes that burden off. So it's really the important thing is, is to, uh, work with somebody. I just wanted to say thank you guys for doing what you do. You know, it's, you know, part of what makes this country great is not just it's veterans. It's, it's everybody, you know, everybody looking out for everybody, you know, especially in, so the services that you provide navigating something like this, that's so trivial in America, you know, getting access to the healthcare that people need, like that's, 
that's a huge thing that affects everybody. So thanks for doing what you do. And, you know, cause it's honestly, it's, it's noble work. And I'm glad that you found a, found a passion in it because you had successes in other areas, but you swept switched over to something cause you wanted to help people. And it's very apparent that you're passionate about it. So thank you for doing oh, that. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And again, thanks for having us on. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, really appreciate you, Renee and Kyle, for jo joining us and chopping it up on Behind the Lava Lava. And thank you to our audience for tuning into this episode. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to follow Behind the Lava Lava, drop a comment and leave us a review. Remember to go follow Renee and Kyle on their social media pages. This is Michael Tan and the team signing off. So fast we fool. In all my interests, it's who I am. Who I am. I'm trying to make these digits look like EINs. When the help ain't free, you all help me. Help. Salute to folks who turn their names to LLCs. Okay. The wealth is in itself to help a nonprofit. Right. To be better women or better men, whether business by veterans or common folks with a dream. a dream. We're all born with the same strength. We tread waters and we're untouched. Let's be on the same wavelength. Behind the lava, lava, front of our eyes. Let our legacy live off it when we're up in the sky. All signs point to us to help someone make a difference. With God as my witness, let's talk business.